Hello everybody and welcome. It's Morgana here with uh, your Morgana Monday's Christmas edition painting. Today I'm going to be demonstrating for you the simple semi-abstract scene of a lovely snowy wild Boxing Day walk. To begin with I'm using a piece of Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. Um, I'll pop all the details of my equipment in the list below the video for anybody who's interested. Um, I'm going to be using a palette knife today to paint the sort of main feature of this landscape. It's a really fun technique using a palette knife and some quite thick tube uh, watercolour paint. Uh, so I'm beginning today by using clean water to just wet the uh, top two thirds of my paper. This paper has been cut down from a quarter imperial sheet into something a little smaller. Uh, I find that sometimes it's a little bit easier to uh, manage to do simple scenes like this on smaller paper. So this is an eighth imperial or 11 inches by 7.5 inches. So I'm using uh, yellow ochre and indigo today. You can see I've just squeezed out two um, little blobs of paint on the underside of my palette knife. And uh, to begin with, I'm just going to swipe them carefully along the line that I've made with the water. And that's going to create our horizon line. Uh, and now I want a little sort of scratchy, scrabbly path down here, uh, which is why I didn't put any water along this sort of bottom part of the paper. Because I wanted to be able to make these sort of um, scratchy, almost dry brush style marks with the palette knife that's going to give us a, a lovely snowy path line. As you can see, I needed to add a little bit more paint onto my palette knife to just complete this path here. And you can see the paint is really rather thick. Uh, what you can do is once you've created the uh, shapes that you're happy with, you can then go in with uh, a brush or a smaller palette knife and scrape off some of the excess paint that's on the paper. Uh, otherwise, sometimes it doesn't quite dry properly. Uh, but all I'm doing now, as you can see, I've just grabbed my board and I'm turning it upside down and I'm adding a little bit of extra water with my trusty water spray. And I'm going to uh, try and get the paint to start moving around a little bit. And now, as I'm sure you've spotted, I'm painting this uh, flat on my surface. My board is uh, completely flat and my surface is covered with newspaper to protect it from any runoffs you may get from using this extra water. You can see whilst the paper's really wet from spraying, I just added in a little bit of extra indigo, just really loosely with a large flat brush. And that's just gonna give us a really simple sky uh, as a backdrop. And uh, I'm holding the board up with one hand and adding more color with the palette knife uh, with the other. And of course, the more you tip and tilt your painting around, uh, the more movement you're going to get and the more sort of interesting shapes you're going to get from that, that, uh, that rich paint uh, once you've got enough water on it to make it move. So we've got uh, a little bit of movement there. You can see my tree line is starting to appear, which I'm really pleased about. We've got that lovely sort of soft sort of bloom of indigo in the sky, which has given us a lovely sort of um, chilly, snowy sky, chilly atmosphere, I think, in this painting. So now I've just sprayed a little bit water onto that lower part and now I'm just encouraging the paint to move a little bit with my uh, flat brush just to get some detail down in the foreground as well. Now you'll notice that despite using a blue and a yellow together they're not really mixing up and making green except for just in that one part where I muddied it with the brush a little uh, and that's the key to getting these colours to remain sort of as themselves. Uh, rather than mixing into a sludgy green colour is you sort of place them beside one another and let them do the work. And you see here I'm just placing a little bit of extra water and a little bit of extra indigo into this uh, straight horizon line here just to encourage some more blooms to form. I'm turning the uh, board upside down and I'm holding it upright and letting that paint drift down and you can see it's creating this lovely sort of misty tree background uh, along the horizon line. 
and as soon as you're happy with the shapes that the paint has made you can turn the board back upright and lay it flat uh, and it will keep those impressions rather than running any further. You can see I'm just uh, making a couple of adjustments to the foreground here, just smoothing out that line whilst the paint is wet. But now I've left it to dry for a few more minutes, you can see it's still quite wet but almost uh, all of the shine has come off the uh, parts of the painting where those misty trees are, so basically where that uh, richer paint is along the horizon line. So I'm going to add in my salt, this is just pretty bod standard cheap table salt, uh, very fine and uh, you can see I've just got it in a little dish for ease of use and I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle it quite liberally uh, across basically all of the parts of the paper where it's wet and where there is paint. And the reason I'm doing this is because each little grain of salt is going to uh, absorb some water and some paint along with it, sort of pull it out of the paper while it's still wet and leave these lovely little uh, feathery white marks behind uh, once it's all dried. And that is going to really simply and really quickly create a uh, blizzard of snow across the top part of the paper. So this is what the salt looked like a couple of minutes after I'd sprinkled it on. You can see it's beginning to appear. And now this is after 10 minutes. You can see where I've scattered it. It's pulling that paint up and leaving these lovely little soft white feathery marks. So now I'm just going to leave it alone and uh, let it do its thing. It's going to continue to work. Uh, as the paint dries, the blooms become uh, more pronounced. Uh, they're going to be slightly larger in the sky because that is a lighter paint and a wetter area whereas when you've got richer, thicker paint the uh, marks are going to be a little bit smaller and more sort of crystallised. So I left the painting to dry overnight uh, because adding salt will always add on to the drying time of a painting so that's something to bear in mind. Uh, but look at the result, I'm really pleased with it. You can see that salt has gone a little bit wild I think I can certainly call that a blizzard uh, or a snowstorm fit for a Christmas painting. So uh, it's time to just add a few simple details that are going to pull this semi-abstract painting together. Uh, so just to add a bit of scale and depth, I'm adding really simple uh, reeds into the foreground of the painting, just some reeds and rushes, the implication perhaps that the person looking at this scene or taking this uh, snapshot, this photograph, is standing some way off uh, next to a riverbank perhaps, peering through the rushes and looking out on the sprawling snowy landscape before him. And so to do this I have mixed up some of the yellow ochre and indigo on my palette uh, into this slightly sludgy, just off yellow colour and I'm using my uh, sword liner brush which is a size small to just do these sort of lovely sort of long straight lines in various thickness pulling them up from the bottom of the page and into the composition. Trying to keep these quite loose and uh, quite simple. Uh, this is a semi-abstract painting by nature so I don't want to add too much detail that's going to sort of clash with its nature, I just want to add those little finishing touches. And as you can see, I'm alternating by putting in these uh, sort of larger, sort of thicker uh, reed shapes, uh, alternating with these little spindly grasses as well. This just helps the uh, helps that foliage look a little bit more natural, a little bit looser, and perhaps more alive. I'm also alternating between colours. So I'm moving between my yellow ochre and my indigo, which are the only two colours I've used so far uh, in this scene. Um, I don't know if salt counts as a colour. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to count it. Uh, but as you can see, I'm just varying the colours throughout this uh, little patch of rushes here, this little patch of rushes and reeds, uh, just to get a little bit of interest and balance into the composition.
and of course uh, at this point you can add uh, as much or as little detail uh, as you like here. I choose to keep this quite simple um, but if you've got a favourite perhaps a winter plant that you wanted to put into the foreground uh, like some perhaps sort of dried uh, cowslip heads or some honesty or something like that or even just some slightly more detailed uh, winter sort of reeds and rushes or cattails or bull rushes that sort of thing uh, would look equally as lovely I think uh, so there's always room for variation in paintings like this to suit your personal uh, preference, to suit your personal choice. But as you can see, I'm just choosing to go with these really simple reeds. So after leaving them to dry fully, uh, to make sure I didn't smudge them with my hand, uh, I'm beginning on the little figure. Uh, I decided this painting just needed a, a human touch, so I've added a lone figure walking their dog. I used indigo for part of the figure but decided that uh, they needed to stand out a little bit against this snowy backdrop so I'm using Windsor Red to give them a nice bright uh, upper body, a uh, nice bright red uh, parka or puffer jacket perhaps to keep them warm in this chilly weather. And because this is um, relatively uh, a small painting and uh, an even smaller person, uh, I'm using my fine brush which is a size 4 slash 0, a little miniature brush, but you of course can use any brush that you have that comes to a nice fine point. They don't need to be overly detailed, it just needs to be a roughly human shape with a little head, um, a slightly blocky, bulky body. I'm giving them just because it's probably quite a big padded coat for this sort of weather. And then uh, you just need a thin line for the legs. And I'm just using a little more indigo to paint in the outline of the dog. Again, this doesn't need to be overly detailed, it just needs to be a rough dog shape. And of course, depending on your dog uh, preference, you can use whichever colour you like. Um, I'm using indigo just because it's on my palette and I think it makes the silhouette stand out a little more against that sort of rough, snowy path that the figures are walking on. And that's our figures done uh, and I'm just adding a little bit more colour and a little bit more detail into these reeds now that they're dry. Uh, I'm able to overlap the yellow ochre paint over the colour we've already got there and just add in it that little extra bit of detail. And you can see here as well, I'm just adding a few darker uh, grasses into the mix as well using uh, these quick uh, sharp strokes of the brush to get some really fine lines. So now I've left the reeds and the figure to fully dry and I can add the finishing touch which is a little bit of spatter to simulate some snow. So this first layer is a, a darker colour, which is just some grubby indigo uh, and yellow ochre mixed with plenty of water. You can see I'm just spattering it with the fan brush over the paler parts of this paper. This just serves to uh, give a little bit of uh, extra texture to those big sort of white swathes of unpainted paper. And I think it helps to give that impression of snow actually falling and swirling around rather than just laying in a lovely sort of clean white sort of bank of snow. And now the final step, I'm adding some extra snow using the same technique with the fan brush. I'm scattering on some white gouache spatters as well just across the dark parts of the painting. So those uh, reeds that we've just painted on, a little bit across the path, across the background and across the figure as well. This is just to give the impression again that the snow is falling, our person is walking through a beautiful snowstorm uh, and it's just to sort of back up those uh, lovely snow marks that we already got into the sky using the salt. 
So now it's all dry and this is the finished painting for you. I really hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed uh, painting this one. Uh, I must admit the salt did go a little wilder than I expected, uh, but that's part of the fun of using salt in paintings like this is you never quite know exactly what shapes you're going to come out with in the end. Uh, but overall I'm really pleased with this. I think it's lovely, wintry and hopefully festive. Uh, a nice boxing day walk if that is still a tradition uh, among anybody watching. Uh, so that's all from me today. I hope wherever you are you're having a wonderful festive season. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and of course happy painting.